Hey everyone, this is Eric, and I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day. So today, um, we'll say on today's topic, we're going to talk about connection. Um, and this is, um, like, say the top ten of um, connections. Okay. So the first one is um, active listening. So um, active active listening is number one. Active listening, pay close to pay close attention to what the other person is saying without interrupting. Show genuine interest in their thoughts and their feelings. So, like when you're engaging in conversation, focus your attention fully on the other person. Maintain eye contact. You know, nod occasionally to show you're listening, and refrain from interrupting. Um, it's also good if you ask follow-up questions, you know, to demonstrate your interest and your understanding. There's one thing that I have a problem with um, <clears throat> is making eye contact, um, something that I have to work on myself. Um, but I think I'm a very good, very good listener, you know, for the most part. Um, the next one is, is uh, empathy. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Try to understand their perspective and show compassion and um, validate their emotions. Okay. So the way you can do that is you can practice empathy, you know, by actively trying to understand the other person's feelings and perspectives and reflect back on what they're saying to show that you're listening and emphasizing um, with their emotions. One thing you want to do is you want to do your best to avoid judgment and instead offer support and validation. That's one thing that's, that I've had a lot of problem with in the past, and I'm sure many have, is being quick to judge, you know. I know Jesus said, um, there's always, you know, the people who, a lot of Christians say it, um, they say, it's, it's mainly a around the Christian circle, they, they'll say things like, um, <clears throat> they'll say things like, you know, who are you to judge? Okay. But the, on that part, I'm going to say this, that um, kind of go off on a tangent a little bit, that Jesus never said not to judge. He just says that if you're going to judge, do so rightfully. So if you read that verse in context, you kept reading, you would see about how it says to take out the log out of your eye, you know, so you can take the splinter out of your, out of your brother's eye, you know, your friend's eye, you know, um, so that we can be, see clearly to judge. So when you're judging, you make sure that you are, um, do so right, rightfully, righteously, okay? Now this says, you know, empathy is not avoid judgment, okay, um, which is which is good when you don't know all of the facts. The next one is share personal experiences. So open up about your own experiences, struggles, triumphs. This uh, vulnerability can foster a deeper connection and encourage the other person to do the same. So. Be willing to open up about your experiences, thoughts, and feelings. Um, you're going to share stories that are relevant to conversations and show uh, vulnerability. This can help the other person feel more comfortable opening up to you as well. The next one is <clears throat> find common interest. Find common interest. Discover shared hobbies, passions, or experiences that you both enjoy. Engaging in activities together can strengthen your bond. So, initiate conversations, right, and topics um, that you're both interested in. You know, um, if you're interested in dogs, talk about dogs. If you're interested in cats, talk about cats. You know, if you discover um, a shared hobby or a passion, um, maybe a, going on a trip to a certain place, Jamaica, I don't know, just wherever, Hawaii, just wherever, 
um, you know, suggest doing something like that one day, doing it together, you know, and this could be anything like, you know, going on a hike or if you're into that type of stuff or attending a concert or trying out a new recipe, you know, just doing, doing the little things uh, together. Number five is ask thoughtful questions. Show curiosity about the other person's life by asking open-ended questions that encourage meaningful conversations. So take an active interest in the other person's life by asking questions that invite deeper conversations instead or of just asking the asking about their day ask inquire about their thoughts their feelings their experiences listen attentively to the responses and ask for follow-up questions to keep the conversation flowing so it's kind of like one of those i think it's kind of like um, one of those things where when you're connecting with somebody let's say it's facebook and you're connecting with somebody on facebook and you say i'll use bob for example you say hello bob how are you you know and people are starting to see that you know that's uh, a lot of times you know it's uh, something that you hear all the time you know what i'm saying so so you know it's good to um, I mean, you can inquire about their day or their thoughts or their feelings. Um, usually the way, the way I do the, the, I was taught to, <clears throat> to strike up a conversation with someone is just comment on something that they post, something that's, um, something that they did that seems passionate to them, you know, stuff like that. So. The next one is number six is respect boundaries. Mm -hmm. Respect boundaries. So be mindful of other people's boundaries and comfort levels and respect their need for space or privacy. So you pay attention to verbal and nonverbal cues that indicate the other person's comfort level. If they seem hesitant to discuss a certain topic, or need space, respect their boundaries. Avoid prying or pushing them to share more than they're comfortable with. So respect them, respect their boundaries. If they don't want to tell you any more than they're telling you, don't push it, just let it go, right? So number seven is uh, offer support. Be there for the other person during challenging times. Offer a listening ear, words of encouragement, or practical assistance when needed. So you want to be there for, like I said, be there for the person during difficult times. Um, offer them a listening ear. Say, hey, you know, I don't have much to say, but I'm going to listen to you. You know, don't judge. How can you support them? What what can I do to help you? You know, um, this could also involve offering practical help, providing emotional support, simply just being present for them when they need someone to talk to. You know, and so number eight, express gratitude, show appreciation for the other person's presence in your life. Thank them for their friendship, their support, or contributions. A simple thank you can go a long way in strengthening your connection and making the other person feel valued. Feel valued. So that's express gratitude, you know. Show an appreciation for the other person's presence in your life, acknowledging their contributions, and express gratitude for their friendship, you know, uh, or a companionship. So number nine is uh, be authentic, be authentic, be genuine and true to yourself. Be authentic, right? Um, because being authentic fosters trust and it allows for genuine connections to form, right? You always want to be that person that's 
steps out of the crowd and is authentic, you know, being genuine and true deep to your own self is where it starts. Um, and being true to yourself in your interactions with others, you know, and sharing your true thoughts and feelings and opinions, even if they differ from the norm, right? Because authentic people build trust and they allow for deeper and more meaningful connections to form. A lot of people are, um, <clears throat> a lot of people, they want, they, they only say of what the other person thinks that they want to hear, right? So what they'll do is they'll say like, um, and I used to say when I was younger, um, in elementary school, um, if we were in a, like a, kids, all the kids, me and the other kids were in a group, whatever, and they were all talking. Let, let's say that I like dogs, okay, and someone, and let's say someone said, hey, do you, and this is someone started a conversation and said, hey, you know, I like, I like, um, I like dogs, do you, or do you, or they'll say like, do you like dogs? And the other one, when they would start say, going in the group saying, no, I don't like dogs, they're scary, or they bite, or, or whatever else, I would, instead of being true to myself and, and being true to myself and saying, hey, you know, I like dogs, I would say, oh, no, I don't like dogs. I would try to join in with the crowd. So I wasn't being authentic. I was always wanting to try to fit in. I won't, you know, I was always at the the uh, thing of what's that word back or call or whatever of what is it that that person is going to say so i can agree with them even though i didn't like it just so i could fit in and yeah you want to always be authentic because it builds trust and allows for deeper more meaningful connections to form so anyway the number the last one is number 10 and it is stay connected so you make an effort to stay in touch um, on a regular basis, whether it's face-to-face, -face, interactions, phone calls, text, social media, just however. Consistent communication helps maintain and strengthen relationships over time. I can, you know, in my relationship with the Lord, I can see where that is a big thing is to stay connected, you know, um, Stay connected with him, praying, um, taking communion with him, just um, spending quiet time with him every single day. You know, I can see where I can see the balance where some people, um, they're Christians, they say they believe in God, but they have no connection with him whatsoever. You know, so you want to make an effort to stay in that touch and you know, and it, because it strengthens relationship, you know, over time, you know? And so make an effort to stay in touch with, with other people um, on a regular basis and reach out to them, you know, call them on the phone, text message them, go on to social media, check in, hey, how are you doing? You know, schedule, you can even schedule meetups or activities, you know, um, and in time, as you continue to do that, you strengthen your relationship up. And that's, you know, I have a good friend, um, his name's Josiah. He's been a friend of mine since uh, we were both in kindergarten. And uh, I'm 48 now, I'll be 49 this year, um, 2024. And he'll be uh, 48. So, so anyway, uh, that's the, the top, Ten or whatever you want to call it, um, of the ten ways to connect with someone. If this uh, video um, gave value, or um, you have any other things that you can put in the comments of how do you connect with someone, then or any topic you would like to hear, let me know, and uh, I'll be having a wonderful and, and blessed day. Thank you.